with um, Creek Nation's Behavioral Health Services. He will be our host today. Um, before we get started, though, I want to go over a couple of things so you'll know how to play the game. Um, well, actually, Tyler will give you all the instructions, but just the technical part. Um, and on your screen, you should see a couple of different buttons. There's a Q&A and there is also a chat. Um, when you're responding to answers, you're gonna be putting that in the chat. And then if you have general questions about the information or anything that Tyler talks about, you can put that in the Q&A and we'll remind you of that as we go through the, through the webinar. Um, like I said, I'm with the Muskogee Nation Youth Services Program. Our mission is to empower Muskogee youth by connecting to culture, community, and resources. And we have several different program goals you see there. Um, encouraging wellness is one of our biggest goals that we focus on. It has a lot of different um, activities that we try to provide. Um, our mental health services is one of those things that we try to promote within Encouraging Wellness. Um, we partner with behavioral health on many different opportunities. Um, they do some great work and, in providing mental health services to our community and within our schools and things like that. And so it is Suicide Prevention Week and we wanted to um, work together with them to have this trivia game, give you guys an opportunity to learn a little bit more about um, suicide prevention and an opportunity to win some really cool prizes. So having said that, I'm gonna go ahead and send it over to Tyler. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you all for being here. Um, I was really stoked to hear that you wanted me to help out with trivia because I'm such a huge trivia nerd and I really love uh, this topic and I'm very passionate about suicide prevention. Uh, I've been working in this field for over five years now and um, mental health has always kind of played um, um, a huge role just in my life in general um, as somebody who's experienced a lot of it and somebody who's helped friends and family out throughout my whole life with mental health. Um, it's just something I'm really passionate about um, and I'm really glad to be able to bring some of those resources and and really just kind of open up the conversation about mental health, uh, especially during this week, which is Suicide Prevention Week. But let's go ahead and go over the, the, the instructions really quick for today's trivia game. Again, my name is Tyler Stone uh, and I'll be your host today. I work for the Muskogee Creek Nation. Uh, I work for the Suicide Prevention and Substance Abuse uh, Grant. We work primarily with 10 to 24 year old youth uh, who are native and let's go over these instructions. So today, uh, Nancy Mason is going to be the trivia judge and the scorekeeper. So whenever we go through the questions, um, you'll have 30 seconds to answer each question. And um, if you, let's go ahead and test this out right now using the chat function, go ahead and send a private message to Nancy. It can just be your name. It can just say, you know, hello, hi, um, because that's gonna, be how you communicate your answers uh, to, to Nancy directly. So make sure when it, to do that, you just click on chat. And when it says two, you can just click on that little drop down box there, select Nancy Mason privately, and you can just send her a message that way. And I'm gonna let you know, I see Rhonda Beaver, I see Connie Dearman, um, just to make sure, let's see, I've got Johnny. Hey Johnny, make sure you choose Nancy on that two spot, the two spot. Try it again if you would want to do that. Um, just click the down drop, and you should see my name. And then send me another message. That way, no one sees your answers. You don't want to get any answers away. Um, I see a couple of more people on the line. Row, send us a send me a message. I know you want to play and win some prizes. Oh, Jasmine says it only gives her an option for all panelists. Just do, do all panelists, because I'll see it. If you don't see Nancy's name, do all panelists, and I will see that. Gotcha. I wonder if it only lets us do private messages because we're panelists. Maybe that's why? Oh, yeah, because it does do it. all panelists. Hey, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, Ro, I see you now. Johnny, I see. Yours says, um, and attendees. Change yours to where it just says all panelists. Mm -hmm. Take the attendees off, Johnny. Got you, Johnny. Awesome. You're in. You're in. Okay. Oh. It's Zoom. It's weird. Every okay. Zoom is different. All right. So that's how you're going to be submitting your answers is just select all panelists. Uh, and Nancy's going to be keeping score and keeping track of those as they come in. All right. So the way we'll do this is um, there's going to be 
um, a handful of questions. I'll read them off and then each contestant will have 30 seconds to submit their answer through a private message to all panelists um, and then we will reveal the answer um, and then talk a little bit more about that afterwards. Also you can only submit one answer at a time uh, so just keep that in mind and I'm going to go ahead and set up my phone for 30 seconds and I will start the timer after I read the question. Uh, after I read the question I'll start the timer, I'll call time, I'll read that question again, and then I'll share the answer and we'll discuss it a little bit further. And we will just continue to keep doing this throughout all of the different questions that we have. Um, and then afterwards, uh, Nancy will um, um, reveal the winners. So we'll have a first, second, and third place winner. And does anyone have any questions about the rules before we get started? If so, go ahead and send us a message. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the slideshow up. Tyler, I just saw Sarah entered us. Sarah, we mm -hmm. send a message to all panelists. Um, you're going to enter your answers just by doing the all panelists. Don't, don't send it to the other attendees so they don't see your answers. Just do a test. You can send your name in that in the chat. You want to play, we have fabulous prizes. All right. All righty. And just to kind of echo again, um, you know, after each of these questions, we, I, I may expand a little bit more on some of these, these slides, some of these questions and answers. Um, and that's what that Q&A um, box on the top is, is meant for. Um, go ahead and use that Q&A if you have any questions for me, and I'd love to address any questions that you may have about anything pertaining to suicide prevention or resources or advocacy or anything like that. All righty. Nancy, are we ready to get going? Yes. Okay. All righty. Here we go. For 100 points, question one. Um, let me move my box here. True or false? Asking someone if they are thinking of suicide will put the idea into their head. 30 seconds starts now. Asking someone if they are thinking of suicide will put the idea into their head. Is that true or false? Go ahead and send that answer over to Miss Nancy, and then we will reveal the answer momentarily. 10 seconds remaining. Time. The correct answer is false. Um, a lot of us think it's true. Um, there's definitely this, this idea, kind of this preconceived notion that if we talk about suicide or if we ask somebody if they're feeling suicidal, that we're gonna kind of plant this idea in their head. And that could be where a lot of the fear of why we don't have these conversations come from is because we've kind of learned or we've had this false narrative that if we talk to somebody who's suicidal that we're going to um, upset them or put this idea in their head but that's actually not the case when we ask somebody directly about their suicidal intent we open up that door of communication and it actually helps them when they're able to talk about it more um, because they don't feel so isolated they don't feel so alone um, and that's a really awesome thing and that's what we're always aiming to do when we have these conversations is to let people know that we see their pain and that um, we're here to help. All righty. So ready for question two? Yes, sorry, I was muted, yes. Oh, you're good, <laughs> you're good. All right, question two for a hundred points. True or false? If someone wants to die by suicide, they will find a way no matter what we do to limit their access to lethal means. 30 seconds. If someone wants to die by suicide, they will find a way no matter what we do to limit their access to lethal means. True or false? 15 seconds.
time. All righty. The answer is false. So a lot of times when people are in a suicidal cri uh, crisis, they sometimes will make a plan where they will identify how they're going to carry out the way that they intend to die. Um, but the fact is 90% of people who survive a suicide attempt will not go on to die by suicide. Um, and what we focus on doing a lot is um, called means restriction. So if we identify somebody who has access to lethal means such as firearms, uh, knives or medication, um, what we aim to do is rally around that person and come up with a creative plan to limit access to those means so we can keep that person safe um, during the suicidal crisis, right? Now, this isn't to say that um, we're going to lock up your medication for the rest of your life. and You're never going to be able to take your meds unless I administer them to you. That's not the case. But for the time being, when somebody's in a suicidal crisis and they are at risk for um, uh, taking their own lives, we want to make sure that we are just creating plans to minimize those means as much as possible to ensure their safety, because that's really what matters at the end of the day. Alrighty, question number three, plus bonus points. So 100 points plus bonus points. Alrighty, this one should be fairly simple. When do we celebrate Suicide Prevention Week? And Nancy, when I click it, will it do the bonus question too, or do I have to do answer and then bonus question? Answer and then bonus question. Okay. So we'll do 30 seconds really quick for this one, and then we'll do the bonus question. So when do we celebrate Suicide Prevention Week? time. All right, the question was, when do we celebrate Suicide Prevention Week? It is celebrated uh, Monday through Sunday surrounding World Suicide Prevention Day in September. So I don't think you had to put that word for word, but if you had something pretty close to that, I'll leave it up to the, to the trivia judge for that one. But bonus for 50 points, what day is World Suicide Prevention Day? We'll do 15 seconds for this one. When is World Suicide Prevention Day? Time. Pencils down. All right, what day is World Suicide Prevention Day? It is today, which is September the 10th. So every year we celebrate World Suicide Prevention Day on September the 10th, um, and we do that by wearing yellow, making social media posts, um, and really just trying to find ways to have these conversations. It's kind of like what we're doing now. Um, we're showing our support by wearing yellow, we're making Facebook posts or Instagram posts, we're getting together and we're having a fun trivia game, but we're also talking more, we're learning more about suicide prevention. So September 10th is World Suicide Prevention Day. Make sure I didn't, okay. All right, for 200 points. Let's check this one out, 200 points. In 2017, the musician Logic released a song featuring the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. What was the official name of that song? In 2017, the musician Logic released a song featuring the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. What was the name of that song? 20 seconds remaining. Time. All right, 
Logic song featuring the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. The name of the song was called 1-800-273-8255, um, which is really cool because the title of the song is the actual number of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. So I remember when I first heard about this song, I was actually, um, I was really big into Logic back then. I mean, I still like him, but I was going through his discography on Spotify and I saw that he had this new um, song that was just a phone number and I thought at first it didn't quite register but I know the number um, but I, at first I thought oh that's super cool his the name of this song is the literal resource it's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number and it was just really cool I listened to the song and the song is is really this this conversation of somebody who's really struggling with suicide and, and thoughts of suicide and then they're calling that number and they're talking to somebody and it's this really cool conversation um, between somebody who's helping somebody in a suicidal crisis and then the perspective of somebody in that suicidal crisis and it has a really good happy ending and I just thought it was a really cool it was a really cool move for Logic to come out with a song that talked about a really important topic and then also the title of his song for anyone listening to it had a literal it was a literal lifeline that was in his song. It was the title of his song. And once that song came out, I I know that the Lifeline um, Crisis Center saw a, an increase in calls, um, which can be a great thing that people were reaching out who may have not felt comfortable doing so in the past until that song came out. Um, so I just think it was really cool that Logic um, really took his, his platform and his art and was able to talk about a really important topic like suicide. All righty, for 200 points in Oklahoma, do more people die by suicide or homicide in a given year? 30 seconds. In Oklahoma, do more people die by suicide or homicide in a given year? All right, time is up. The question was, in Oklahoma, do more people die by suicide or homicide in a given year? And the answer is suicide, which um, may come as a surprise to some people um, because we hear about a lot of the homicides that happen in our state and around the world, um, but we don't hear a lot about um, suicides necessarily. But in Oklahoma, suicides actually outnumbered homicides almost three to one. Um, and that can have both have an immediate and long term impacts on the individuals, families and even communities. Um, in the year 2018, there were 790 deaths by suicide in the state of Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's can play a really important role in suicide prevention. Um, you know, a, a lot of times, you, like I said, when we turn on, um, we go to social media or if we turn on the news, we might see um, we, we might read the news and about a homicide happening. So we have in our heads and we think that there's actually more homicides happening in our state and really in our whole uh, country. Um, but the fact is we actually have a lot more suicides taking place. Now I say that to, I, I want to mention that I don't think the news should be reporting suicides that happen in, in our area because um, they, since I do have such a huge impact on individuals and they and communities. Um, the news also doesn't uh, report suicides very well and sometimes they leave out resources or sometimes they inadvertently romanticize suicide, especially if it's somebody who was famous and passed away from suicide. Um, but I do think it's really important that we know and understand that suicides do happen at a higher rate than we may think. Um, and it's important that we're knowing those signs and we learn more about those signs and we, we find resources and we, we find the courage to ask those really important questions and to uh, be empathetic and, and reach out to individuals who may be struggling or for struggling ourselves, finding the courage to reach out to a trusted friend or a trusted family member 
who can help us get through whatever it is we're going through. Alrighty, on to the next question, which is worth 200 points. True or false? Suicides are more frequent during the holiday season. 30 seconds on the clock. True or false? Suicides are more frequent during the holiday season. Time. The answer is false. A lot of us have probably heard that, that suicides are more frequent during the holiday season, especially uh, Christmas. But what we know from the data is that it actually shows that suicide rates are often the lowest during the holiday months. Um, suicide is very complex. We're always striving to learn more and more about it as years go on. And there's a lot of different factors that play into uh, suicide. Um, uh, there could be seasonal differences um, that are happening. Um, we know that these factors can play a, a, an important role um, or likely influence seasonal dif differences in suicide rates. Um, you know, when people are more connected for family time, that could be a factor into why somebody doesn't die by suicide. Um, so there's a lot of different things to consider, but according to the data and what we've seen, um, suicide rates actually aren't more frequent during holiday seasons such as Thanksgiving or Christmas. Alrighty, for 300 points. Alrighty. Question is, can you name a suicide prevention gatekeeper training? Uh, and if so, which one? So what is the name of a suicide prevention gatekeeper training that you're aware of? Fifteen seconds on the clock. Alrighty, I saw that we had a few answers. These are some acceptable answers here. We have QPR. Um, hopefully a lot of you have heard of that. Um, that's kind of our bread and butter training that we do a lot of. Uh, Safe Talk, Assist, Signs of Suicide or SOS, Cognito or Talk Saves Lives. So these are all acceptable answers here. These are some different uh, suicide prevention gatekeeper trainings. Um, and a lot of people may ask like, what is a suicide prevention gatekeeper training exactly? Like, what does that mean? Basically what it means is um, we get trained to train other people in the community about suicide prevention training. Um, and basically what that looks like is we get together and we make over a few stats, just talk about the impact of suicide, you know, within um, the state, um, or more, more macro looking at the country or also looking at its impact on Native Americans um, and other race and ethnicities in the state and in the country. And then what we aim to do is um, teach you about warning signs, what to look for in an individual. You know, how would, I, how would I know if my family member is struggling with suicide or if my friend um, who I know is going through a hard time, how do I know if they're, if they're struggling with suicide? if they're having some of these thoughts. So we teach people uh, how to look for those warning signs. And then we teach people how to ask those really hard questions, you know, such as, are you thinking about killing yourself? Or just starting off a conversation with, are you okay? And not accepting, I'm doing fine as an acceptable answer, right? Digging a little bit deeper. And then we also train people on, how does that conversation look, getting somebody the help that they need and what are some of those resources in our area where we can refer people, you know, and how do we stay in touch with them? How do we talk about minimizing some of those means that they may have access to, such as firearms or pills, right? 
So in a nutshell, that's what a suicide prevention gatekeeper training will entail. Um, QPR is probably the most common one that we use. Um, Cognito is a really good one too. That one's more interactive on the computer. Uh, and Talk Saves Lives is um, a little bit newer and it's very similar to QPR. Hey Tyler, I wanted to jump in and mention that the mm -hmm. scores are really good. It's really close. So Ooh, everyone nice. keep playing, keep playing. So we got a barn burner, love it. Let's keep going for 300 points. All righty. What TV show out of the following features a suicide prevention storyline? Is it Manifest, A Million Little Things, This Is Us, or Grey's Anatomy? We have Manifest, A Million Little Things, This Is Us, or Grey's Anatomy. 10 seconds remaining. All right, time is up. Whoops. The correct answer is A Million Little Things. Whoops. So A Million Little Things is a show that is on the ABC network. Uh, it's about a close group of friends um, and they're shocked after a member of their group dies from suicide unexpectedly. Um, and each friend realizes that they need to finally start living life as they cope with their loss. Um, I've personally never seen the show. Um, I don't watch a ton of cable or, or a ton of TV, unfortunately. But I think it's cool that, um, you know, we have shows that are addressing suicide. Um, and, and hopefully in really um, positive and supportive ways. Um, there was a TV show that came on Netflix that was very popular uh, a few years ago called 13 Reasons Why. Um, and unfortunately it didn't handle um, suicide um, in the best way. And we saw a lot of issues from that show, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully a million little things uh, handled it much better. Yeah, th Tyler, I'm a big fan of Million Little Things. I've watched mm -hmm. it from the beginning. If you haven't seen it, you need to go and find it on Hulu. It may be on Netflix, I'm not sure, but it is okay. amazing. And it, it really talks about um, mental health, men accessing mental health. Nice. Um, and it just has lots of really good messages in it. So I definitely encourage you guys to look at it. Oh, that's awesome. It's probably on Hulu because I know a, a lot of ABC shows are on Hulu now, uh, which I have. So I may need to check it out. Yeah, it is there. I don't know if it's on Netflix, though. Okay. Well, I have Hulu, so I'll have to definitely check it out. I'm glad you can, you can definitely advocate for it. All righty. Next question for 300 points. What does AFSP stand for? 30 seconds on the clock. What does AFSP stand for? Time. What does AFSP stand for? It stands for American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. So AFSP was actually established in 1987. It's a voluntary um, health organization that gives those affected by suicide a nationwide community empowered by research, education, advocacy, and they take action against uh, this leading cause of death, which is suicide. Um, AF, um, AFSP is a really cool resource. We use them all the time. If you've ever heard of a of a, an event called Out of the Darkness, it's basically, if you're familiar with our hope walks, imagine our hope walk that we have where we have individuals come together and then we, we walk in solidarity and to raise awareness of suicide and then we have a remembrance ceremony at the end. The Out of the dark, Darkness walk is that times like 100. It's people from all over the state come together. <clears throat> um, people have teams 
where they honor those who they've lost to suicide. Um, they have beads that you wear. Um, uh, different color beads mean something different. Um, sometimes there's a balloon release at the end as kind of part of that remembrance ceremony. Um, it's really just a time for people to come together who have been impacted by suicide to just come together, um, share different resources that are out there, have conversations, and it's this really awesome sense of community that you're not alone, that you're within a group of people who have also lost somebody to suicide. Um, and though everyone grieves differently and everyone has a different story and everyone struggles differently, it's still a really awesome way for people who are struggling to kind of struggle together in this kind of cathartic therapeutic way and to just know that you're not alone in, in your struggling. So it's really awesome. I work it every year. Um, this year may be pretty different given our current situation, um, but if you ever have a chance to to join the Out of Darkness Walk or just walk and participate in it. It's always on a Saturday. It's always in October. I'm sorry, it's always in September. Uh, so the weather's starting to get nicer. It's not so hot, not so cold. Um, it's a really fun time. And typically we're out there with a resource booth or we're just working the event, volunteering, helping out with registration or whatnot. Alrighty, next question for 400 points. Question is, pain isn't always obvious, but most suicidal people show signs that indicate that they are thinking about suicide. Name at least three warning signs of suicide. And I will start the clock now, 30 seconds. Name at least three warning signs that may indicate that somebody is thinking about suicide. Right, time is up. Uh, Nancy, I know that one, we only did 30 seconds. Did we have enough time for everyone to submit their answers? I will make sure that we get them all in. Okay. All right, so the question was three warning signs. Um, and this is just a list of different warning signs that we may cover in some of our trainings. Um, somebody who's talking or wanting to die from suicide or who's talking about suicide is definitely a warning sign. If somebody's looking for ways to kill themselves, whether they're Googling it or they're kind of writing things out or they're asking people about it, feeling hopeless or desperate or just trapped, right? Just kind of feeling that nothing is going to get better, that this pain that they're feeling is just going to be with them forever. Somebody who's giving away prized possessions, especially at a young age. Uh, you know, if little Johnny really loves his Xbox One and all of a sudden he's just giving it away, just kind of out of, out of thin air, that can be something to look into. Um, reckless behavior, uncontrolled anger. Are we seeing an increase in drug and alcohol use? Are people becoming withdrawn from family? Do we see a lot of anxiety or agitation? Uh, changes in sleep pattern, sudden mood changes, or no sense of purpose, right? Just feeling very apathetic, very depressed. Um, these are these are just um, some examples of warning signs. Um, everyone's different, but these are some of the most common warning signs that we might see in an individual who um, may be thinking about suicide. Um, and a lot of times when we see these warning signs, the more signs that we observe, the greater the risk may be. And it's really important that we're taking those signs seriously. Um, I know sometimes, um, I know when I was in high school, there was kind of this sense of, well, they're just looking for attention, you know, that, that's all this is for. Um, but that person may need attention. They may need that, that help from somebody. This may be their way of communicating saying, hey, I'm, I'm not okay. Um, I'm withdrawing from people because I am really depressed or I'm using more um, 
drugs and alcohol because I don't want to think about the past and I'm scared of the future. So these substances bring me to the present. I don't think about that stuff. So it's just really important that we're noticing these signs and that we're having these conversations. And when we're talking to people about this, that we're being non-judgmental and that we're being very open and empathetic with that individual. All righty, for 400 points. Before starting a conversation with someone that you are concerned about, there are several things you can do to prepare. Name one of them. So what is something you can do to prepare? Let me start the timer. Before starting a conversation with someone you are concerned about, there are several things you can do to prepare. Name one of them. 20 seconds remaining. Alrighty. So before you start a conversation with somebody you're concerned about, there are several things you can do to prepare. Name one of them. You can prepare a list um, of some of the behaviors that you've been observing, um, that you've been kind of worrying about. Um, this just kind of helps you organize some of your thoughts. So when you have this conversation, you have more of a, uh, of a roadmap on where you want that conversation to go. Um, practicing what you will say, right? Um, this may be something, this is going to be a hard topic to have. So it may be important for us to practice what that conversation is going to kind of start off sounding. Have a list of crisis resources, right? If we're talking to somebody who is suicidal and they may be in a crisis at that moment, we want to make sure that we're prepared and we know what numbers to call, who to call, where to go if the conversation goes in that direction. Um, also, think about uh, what you will say or do depending on how the person responds. Again, this is kind of where our resources come in, but also thinking internally how you will react or respond to some of the answers of the, from the questions that you ask, right? If we ask the question, are you feeling suicidal, and that individual says, yes, I am, we may get kind of scared. We may tense up, and that's a totally normal reaction to have when we're having these conversations because they're not that easy unless you work in this field and you've asked these questions a hundred times, it's really scary. And it also can be scary depending on who you're asking. So if it's a family member, let's say it's one of your kids, or let's say it's your brother or sister or a cousin or your parents, um, it can be really scary. And when they say, yeah, I'm feeling suicidal, our first reaction is to get kind of tense. Um, but it's important that we try to manage those emotions as much as possible, right? And really try to understand where this person's coming from and understand that, okay, they're feeling suicidal, but I have a list of uh, resources here. I'm gonna make sure that this person gets those resources right now. And then plan the conversation for a time when you won't be in a hurry or you can spend time with that person, right? So you probably don't wanna schedule a time to have this conversation with somebody if you've got a hard stop at 6 p.m. and you want to do this at 5. Um, because in my experience working with people who have been suicidal, that conversation is going to take at least an hour. And it goes by really, really fast. Because you talk about a lot of stuff and you allow that person to unpack whatever it is they have going on. So that conversation can last a long time. Um, so just make sure that you're, when you're having that conversation, that that's your main priority and everything else um, kind of falls to the wayside for a little bit um, just to make sure because the last thing you want to do is say you know dang it 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 sucks you're going through this and there's a lot going on but i've really got to get going you know because what did we do there we pretty much left the person hanging and they're probably not going to ask us for help anymore and if we reach out again they may be less willing to open up right so we just want to make sure that we don't um, have any kind of hard stops there when we're having those conversations. Um, and this is really cool to talk about here. I know I, I kind of went off on a uh, went off on my own here, but um, 
this, what it says right here about our role is less important than fixing the problem or convincing them to stay. It's more about being present and listening to them for them to find their own reasons for living. That's really huge. And I think if you understand that, that your role isn't to just immediately fix the problem like we instinctively want to do all the time, then that helps with your anxiety in that other person's as well. Because a lot of times we do, we want to say that one thing that will just make them not feel suicidal right there. Right. And we've all probably been guilty of it. I know I have. So it, what we're trying to do is just sit in the moment with them, talk to them, empathize with what they're going through, letting them know that you're there with them and you're on their side and, and you're going to help them get through this with them. Right. And that we're looking for those reasons for living. Because a lot of times when we're working with somebody, we can ask them, what are your reasons for living? And oftentimes they're going to outweigh their reasons for dying and we can help them identify that. That's when we start seeing a lot of change. All right, next question for 400 points. What are appropriate words to use when talking about suicide? 30 seconds on the clock. What are appropriate words to use when talking about suicide? All right, 30 seconds is over. Appropriate words to use when talking about suicide are died by suicide, took their own life, or ended their life. So those are kind of the three most um, acceptable answers there. These answers probably wouldn't receive points, which is committed suicide or successfully completed suicide. And here's why. So a lot of us still say committed suicide. It's very common in our in our vernacular and in our language, the way we talk about it. And I, I hear it all the time. And what I encourage people to do is to just stop and think about what the term committed kind of means. So it has this criminality connotation to it, right? Like I've committed a crime or I'm committed to doing this, right? So what we aim to do is destigmatize mental health and specifically suicide so people feel more willing to reach out if they're feeling suicidal, if they're in a suicidal crisis. So what we've learned through the years of talking to people who have been impacted by suicide, we've learned that the term committed suicide um, doesn't really sound right, doesn't really feel right. And recently we were told to stop saying completed suicide because that's what they told us to change it to was completed suicide. But they said, well, you're kind of attaching completed like you completed a task, which is a positive thing to suicide. So we want to make sure we separate those two. So we just simply say died by suicide or took their own life or ended their life. Right. And and if you say, you know, committed suicide near me, I'm not going to jump down your throat and I'm not going to throw a big fit but anytime I start off my trainings we always talk about the power of words and our power of language so that's one of the first things we start off with um, just to kind of get it in our heads that we're changing the way we talk about this right because language is really important and it has a lot of weight behind it all righty and I think that was the last question of the trivia. Nancy, do you want me to talk a little bit more about these resources or do we want to tally up the winner? Go ahead and mention those. I've got them. I just need to put them in order. Sure, absolutely. So here are some different resources here that we have. We have the National Suicide Prevention Hotline number, which is 1-800-273-8255. That is the number where you'll call and this is if you or someone you know. So a lot of people forget that if you're worried about somebody in your life who is suicidal and you may be thinking, I don't know who to call. I don't know what to do. I'm kind of freaking out here. What do I do? Well, you can actually call the 273-TALK number or 273-8255 yeah. 
And within a couple minutes, you'll be connected with somebody on the phone and they'll coach you on what to do and how to handle those situations. And then um, they'll mention local resources kind of in your area where you can take that individual to. Also, there's the crisis text line, which is a really cool resource for people who just don't feel comfortable talking over the phone. Um, so if somebody wants to access that resource, you simply just text the word Creek to 741741 and within a couple minutes you're connected to a crisis counselor via text. And this doesn't have to be necessarily a suicide crisis. This could be anything you're dealing, you're dealing with. If it's depression, anxiety, relationship issues, maybe you're afraid of returning to school and what that's going to look like this year given the pandemic. You can utilize that crisis text line. Um, and you don't have to be Creek, or you don't have to be Native American. It's not for a sp specific age, it's for everyone. Um, we use the term Creek um, um, for data purposes. So it lets us know um, what are some of the common themes that people are texting about? What are the um, times in which people are texting the most? Um, and what are some of the areas um, kind of in our catchment area where people may be um, having some of the most issues? Um, and then lastly, our MC and Behavioral Health Services. So we do outpatient therapy for anyone with the CDIB card. Um, we do all ages. Um, so you can give us a call, set up for, a, uh, for an appointment, and we'll do an intake. Basically what that looks like is you call us, we'll do a quick intake, and then we will match you with a therapist, um, and they will see you either in person or virtually, since we're kind of doing that now. So we're doing telemedicine. Um, and a lot of people seem to like telemedicine. Um, Maybe access to, um, maybe driving is hard to get to your appointment. Maybe you have to rely on somebody to take you to your appointment. But now um, with this pandemic, it's kind of broadened our services a little bit. So now we can just say, hey, I'm just going to give you a call or, hey, download this app and we're going to do therapy over the phone, you know. So that's really cool as well. Yeah. So those are the resources there. I want to comment on that. Um, there's actually some young people that I work with who they live in this area, but they're currently away at college. And so they've actually been able to access the telehealth through Creek Nation. Um, and that's just been wonderful. They've really needed that service. And so they're able to get that, even though they're not in our local area right now. Yeah. Um, so definitely. I encourage you guys to check that out. Um, before I announce the winners, I want to share something on my screen. Do we tell sure. If you can I sure that? can. Tyler was talking about all of those different great resources that you can call currently um, to get help for someone who's in crisis. Um, but I want to tell you guys about a call to action. And so currently, there is this piece of legislation that is called the National Suicide Hotline Designation Act of 2020. Um, and basically, they want to create a three digit number 988. Um, to be like that one-stop shop for you to get help for a suicide crisis. And so um, I want to encourage all of you all to participate in the Day of Action on Tuesday the 15th. Um, call your legislators. You can call them now if you want to, or you can wait until that day. Um, we'll be posting a lot of information on our social media on that day to talk a little bit more about it, but it's really going to be a great thing to happen. Um, so we're really excited about that. It's going to be heard by the House of Representatives on um on the 15th, I believe it is. I may be wrong on that, but that is the day of action. So I'm assuming that's the day that they will be looking at that piece of legislation. So please call and support that. It's a really great effort. Um, and so without further ado, we had some, man, I can tell you really high scores. We had about 11 people participating and in this. And because everybody did participate, I wanna make sure everybody gets something. So I'm gonna give you information. Uh, how to reach out to us on that uh, afterwards. But um, two of the prizes um, actually are self-care kits. And then we have another prize that is um, books by Joy Harjo and some beautiful um, jewelry. And so uh, the third place winner is Sarah with 1,650 points. Good job, Sarah. Ooh. Right? Nice. And, uh, Second place is Ro, and she had 1,750 points. And then nice. I, just, I need to tell you guys about this winner. The winner um, of this competition didn't join at the beginning. They came in after a few questions that had already been asked. Whoa, Dark Horse. Still won, exactly, yeah. So with 1,800 points, uh, just a 50 points over the, the second place, Timothy Proctor is the winner. 
And so, yeah, yeah, we appreciate you guys for participating for everyone. Like I said, I want to make sure that um, everyone gets something. And so we, we can do um, some smaller items. We have some essential oil lotions that we can make your, your special flavor. If you'd like one of those, and if you participated today, we want to get you one of those. Um, I'm going to put my cell phone number in the chat. And so if you want to text me, those three winners for sure, text me your information so that we can coordinate with you to get your prizes. And then if you would also like to get um, some essential oils or some other smaller items that we have, um, text me also. I want to make sure that you get something just for, for participating today. We appreciate all of you guys. Um, I want to say thank you to Tyler. You did an amazing job as our host. Thank you. Thank you for having well, me. I appreciate I, it. I, I don't know who that guy is that keeps watching in the background, though, but. Oh, it's my boss. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we boss of the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But thanks again, Tyler. You did a great job. You shared some really good information Absolutely. with us. If you all that are on the call right now know young people ages 12 to 24, we're going to be playing again at four o'clock. So put them on, have them to participate. You can cheat and tell them some answers if you want to, um, but sure. definitely get them in there and have them play with us at four o'clock today. It'll be the same exact link. We'll post it on our Facebook again. Um, if you need to reach our program, here's our contact information. Um, at the bottom is the at Muskogee Youth. That's our social media handle. Um, and so, like I said, you can reach us there. We've been putting out information about suicide prevention week all week. Uh, we'll be doing that again, like I said, next day, on, next week on that call to action. So please follow us, like us, whatever you need to do and, and stay connected. Again, thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you have a great afternoon. Awesome. See thank you, you everyone. Bye.